Welcome. Happy Monday. Let's talk Broncos Bremace to Zach Seegers, Joey Richards. Guys, we have a fun show planned tonight. We're going to be revealing the Let's Talk Broncos consensus Denver Broncos big board here in a second with some interesting comps. I want to give a special shout out to an author of a special article that's going to be coming out on Let's Talk Broncos.com. Cal, he's in the chat. Thanks for uh, giving us some really interesting food comps. We're going to need some clarification from you. Uh, he said, no, you don't. And I will defer to the rest of y'all because we will be having a discussion very shortly about uh, all of these endeavors. But first and foremost, I heard you guys had an interesting night last night. What the heck happened? Yeah, we were at a we were at a crime scene last night. We went to a, a bar in our neighborhood uh, right after a bar fight had finished up. And it's got to be the the worst reason for a bar fight I've ever heard. Uh, so it's, it's a sports bar, you know, they've got like a row of five TVs in this one section and, you know, we don't have a lot of sports going on right now. Uh, so TVs three and five had the Avengers infinity war on granted on mute, um, uh, not even closed captioning, but it had the Avengers on. Okay. Uh, so this family with like four children, uh, uh sitting down there enjoying this uh charlie chaplin version of the avengers uh uh you know at a sports bar doing as any family would these other people come into a sports bar and want to watch a baseball game that's on so they ask the waitress to change one of the tvs to the baseball game uh and the waitress does you know as, as again anyone would expect it's a bar um, keep in mind yeah it's a sports bar um and uh so she does uh this outrages the one of the fathers who wants their kid to be able to watch avengers infinity war on two tvs on mute uh and then starts a full-on bar fight uh, runs up behind one of the guys uh enjoying a baseball game and jumps him from behind knocks him over onto the ground uh this is a uh hard concrete floor uh that, like threw his chair down if, if the guy hit his head he could have been seriously hurt uh cops showed up and <laughs> people caught a case if i was that husband's wife uh, would have been a divorce th that night that's ridiculous uh to to catch a case uh because you couldn't watch the avengers on mute at a sports bar on tnt that's wild and you get into a fist fight with your kids there who are now traumatized both by getting Avengers taken away from them and their dad going postal on some random dude. <laughs> yeah. And they had, they randomly had a pineapple. They were still there when we showed up and they just for no reason had a whole pineapple with them. But, but, but that was also interesting. To me. Yeah. Why did they have that? Pineapple? <laughs> I don't know. Did they come from the grocery store? <laughs> I still have no idea. I think there was bigger issues at play that night than just a spat over some Avengers. Exactly, Cal. Cal's got the answer in the chat. Um, all right. That's an eventful evening. Joey, you survived swimmingly? I I did. It was a very interesting story to follow. Um, it really was. It was just kept escalating. Like Zach asked about it when we walked in to the waitress, and then – Next thing you know, everybody in the outside area of the bar is having the conversation about what just transpired. More information is leaked throughout throughout the night. Turns out it was about Avengers versus baseball, both of which were on mute, as Zach mentioned. It, it was a really crazy night. Um, and the family – was the family that we saw, were they the ones that wanted baseball or the Avengers, Zach? They were the ones that wanted the Avengers. They, they were the ones – What? I think that was a quick mute. I think Zach was on mute and then unmuted himself as he was talking. Does that count? I need I a ruling from it. Joey. I fixed it. It does. I fixed it. Counts. It. It, was, uh, fixed it was it. It was very, it was very uh, reminiscent of the Avengers movie last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just leaning into it. He was giving us trades. All right, guys. Let's jump into it. Let's get through uh, one through six. Their big reveal here. Caleb Williams, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Joe Alt, and Robe Adunze. How do we feel? What do you guys think? I think that's pretty spot on. Uh, although I'm interested at number two. Why does number two stick out so much? Zach, go ahead. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think Drake May is the dude. Uh, Caleb Williams kind of off the table, uh, of course, for the Denver Broncos. Uh, that's kind of the only pick we know. We know he's locked in at number one. Uh, if there's any way Drake May starts to slide, he's the one I would trade um, the farm for. Uh, people might be surprised. Uh, and this is through a Denver Broncos lens. This is players ranked specifically for the Denver Broncos. Um they might be surprised to not see the other two quarterbacks in this top six, uh, Jaden Daniels, especially. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't think they're guys I'd want to see the Broncos trade up for. I don't think they are quite that elite caliber of prospect. I think they just kind of get pushed or they've gotten pushed up as we generally see quarterbacks do. But, uh, Caleb Williams and Drake may are, are rare, rare, rare prospects. Um, that I think is the distinguishing factor between the 2024 class and the 2025 class. People talk about how next year's class is so much worse. That's just because it doesn't have these two generational, maybe not generational, but once every five year uh, type talents. And somehow this class has two of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a huge Drake May guy, a uh, massive Drake May guy. I think he is very deserving to be the number two in this um I, he's, he's just extremely talented. Like if you were to drop a quarterback, that quarterback probably uh, looks like Drake may, and then also moves and throws like Drake may does. Like he's like very creative quarterback esque. Um, my thoughts on just thought top five in general, the only one that I think worries me a little bit might be Joe all he's extremely he, he's amazing. Joe Alt is really amazing. The, I think he has more question marks in his game than I have with these other guys here, though. I will say that. Um, just because of the height, he's 6'9". And, guys, there is a point where you're too tall. Like, at <laughs> you, you can be too tall. Now, his knee bendability it makes up for it. But there is something to be said about the guy being 6'9". That, that, that's, that's my only thing. Um, whereas, like, if I'm asking you, what's Roma Dunze's big weakness? Like, what what worries me about Roma Dunze at wide receiver? What, what's the answer? Like, what what is the scary part about Roma Dunze's game? I think he's a very solid prospect across the board. Whereas uh, Joe Alt, I think he plays with a lot of finesse, and he's extremely tall. Uh, I I I, th I think we saw improvements with him as a run blocker this last season. I don't think you see that every year in his film. And then specifically uh, in pass pro, he's very, 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 very finesse. Uh, and that's something you want to, you know, get more out of him. You want him to be, you want him to be more physical than just finesse and pass pro. Now, now that's not taking anything away from Joel. Joel, it's amazing. I think he's an easy top 10 talent in this. I just am questioning now that I'm looking at it, uh, Roma Dunze or Joe Alt, which one do I like more? See, I'm going on the other end of this. Joe Alt is my number three guy. Um, I, I was the highest of the LTB people on all. I had him above all the wide receivers. Um, I, I think there might be uh, a few more questions with Alt. Uh, thank you, Michael. Those were me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, but um, uh, I think it's a fair point on all. Like he might have more questions. I just think it's so much harder to find these tackles. You're not finding a tackle like Joe all uh, on day two on day three. And I think you can find these elite wide receiver talents on day two on day three. If you look at the highest paid receivers right now, I'm telling you, Joey, look at the highest paid receivers right now. Most of them aren't first round picks. If you look at the top 10, I think something like 70, 80% um, were drafted on day two or day three. Um, so you don't have to find this position top 10 tackle. On the other hand, I think you kind of do. Um, and the Broncos are in a position where they need a, a long-term replacement uh, for bulls or McGlinchey. A tackle is something that's also appealing to me. Uh, one, I think it's just nice uh, foundation builder for, uh, you know, as this team embarks on a rebuild, set, lay that foundation. Um, but also uh, you can then trade Garrett bulls, Get I, like I think Garrett Bowles is going to go for a second, third round pick. Um, I like I think he's going to go for pretty good compensation. It's hard to find left tackles out there. There's teams looking to win a Super Bowl this year that could use help at left tackle, like the Green Bay Packers. Why wouldn't the Green Bay Packers give up um, a first round pick or even a second round pick um, uh, for Garrett Bowles? I think that would make a ton of sense for them. Um, 
Uh, so anyways, I, I think you're not only getting this awesome young tackle talent, but you're also getting that uh, uh, day two pick, that extra day two pick that everyone's clamoring for. Um, Alt does have some questions in his game, uh, but that's also because he's new to the position. His dad was an NFL lineman, wanted him to be a, a more adept athlete than he was, especially knowing how big he was going to be. So he started him off as, at quarterback, and then he got too big for quarterback, so he moved him to tight end. He got too big for tight end, moved him to offensive line. And I think that, like Joey pointed out, he's big, but he plays with this finesse so style. And that's true, and that's why I think he was a little lower uh, going into this last year of his college career. Um, but watching him this past summer and then watching him now, uh, I thought he's improved on his strength a ton. I think he's, uh, a, a lot better at the point of attack and he's, uh, he's one of the best tackle prospects I've ever watched personally. And the, the trajectory with him is also very promising. This isn't a guy that's like came into college as an ass kicker and kind of like plateaued. We've seen year over year, substantial improvement. He's also young, fairly new to the position. I think he's going to be a multiple time all pro in the NFL. He's my number three player. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike Joe Alt at all. And I feel like I'm making cases against him, but it's only because I'm comparing him to Roma Dunze. Well, I, I, I agree with you that um, like I Joe Alt is my number one tackle and I love this tackle class. <clears throat> I think it's a test. Time. But I, 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 I do think there's something to be said about taking the more of a sure thing. Like no one, no one looks at your draft pick if it's good in a hit, <laughs> but people will look at it if the player doesn't turn out good. And I think there's more of a likelihood of Joe Alt not turning out good than Roma, Roma Dunze here. And then I also think Roma Dunze has a sky high ceiling. So like I, well, why uh, it's like I'm going back and forth. I don't know. Um, and I, I, I get it. I, I, I do ultimately get it. I mean, I'm only like one spot away from you. So why? I mean, <laughs> Deion Jordan was hyped up as like a top five pick because he was the safest member of his draft class. And then he did absolutely nothing in the NFL. I don't think like the yeah, idea or Solomon Thomas, same thing for Solomon Thomas or Cleveland Farrell. I don't think like it, yeah, we're all me. that great at projecting like the safe picks. And I don't think Roma Dunze is that I, I do agree with your like, yeah, I think it's fair to have Roma Dunze ahead of him. I just think there, I've seen so many times the idea of like the safe prospect, like Josh Rosen was the safe quarterback prospect in that class. And then he's the worst rookie quarterback we've seen in like the last decade. Um, so I just, I don't know. I don't buy into that too, too much. I will say, I think this top six is just like crazy elite. Like this is just a testament to how elite this draft class is. Like I, uh, zero problems with Roma Dunze. He is like a near flawless wide receiver prospect. It's crazy that he'd even be number five, let alone number six. It's, uh, I, I can't, uh, we're splitting hairs and I, I respect I, it. I, yes, I, I, I want to go further in depth on the safe pick thing, just because like I can look at Josh Rosen and Zach, if I asked you why he didn't turn out to be very great, you could give me an answer. If you, if I asked you about Deion Jordan, <laughs> you would give me an answer of why he didn't turn out very good. Or Solomon Thomas, the tiny tweener defensive tackle. Like these guys, we can look back at that. Sure, that was a narrative at the time. But my opinion might have been different than their opinion on these guys. I think there were plenty of people that were like, Solomon Thomas is a tweener. Josh Rosen, the league has changed where it's like, yes, you need, you can't just be a statue in the pocket. Like, like there are things to these picks. I think um, like when you're looking at wide receiver, like Roma Dunze is a great route runner. Like, I, I just think there is a higher ceiling on a Roma Dunze, which is, I think is, or a higher floor on a Roma Dunze than there is a, one of these quarterback prospects that you mentioned or Deion Jordan or Solomon Thomas, I, I don't see that red flag. Like I can go back and see why these players didn't work out well. I think Pac-12 defense, maybe Michael Penix becomes a good NFL quarterback. You could look at the incredible talent around him. They had a good O-line, uh, two f receivers that are also going to probably go on day two of the draft. One of them might fall to day three, but that's because of injury probably more than anything. Um, funky offense ryan grubbs offense has some like nfl principles but it is a little funky um uh he like really spiked up in terms of his like contested catch win weight win rate this season um it's possible maybe that's an outlier and he's not going to be the uh, beast at the catch point we saw this year i like again 
I wouldn't bet on any of those things. But if we're going to say like there's no reason how a Dunze possibly couldn't work out, I would push back personally on that. But we're splitting hairs here. I, we're going down a rabbit hole. We both we think both these players are amazing. You guys back? All right, happy to have you. Uh, the safest option is what you guys were talking about. Um, and I want to point to the safest option you're going to get at a steakhouse is what, guys? A steak. I want to pull the food comps for these guys because they all are falling in the same realm of, uh, I guess, obvious safe choices. Although we need to, I need to pick your brain on what these means because Marvin Harrison Jr. is listed as a prison steak. Uh, nutritious but dubious, it will fix your concerns. An interesting comp. M uh, Malik Neighbors is prison of our own minds steak. And Adunze <laughs> is the last steak. Nutritious but dubious, it will fix your concerns. Not as good as the others, hence why it's last. I, I, I don't know. How do you feel about those comps for those three, Harrison Neighbors and Adunze? Uh, I think it's kind of perfect there. Like, I think they're all steak they're a nutritious option but you know they don't they're not everything you need they're not maybe a, a full meal on their own um uh and then yeah i think that kind of goes down the the like the tier list one two three uh the, the harrison jr is the best one uh neighbors is the second best and adunze is the third though i am like i don't want to go down another rabbit hole here I'm starting to wonder about neighbors versus Harrison Jr. Harrison Jr. I think is the much safer pick and also has a crazy high ceiling. So I, I'm I don't know if I'm brash enough to put neighbors ahead of him, but like neighbors, I think is just going to be a monster in the NFL. I think he's going to cause. I think not Tyree Kill because Tyree Kill's like a one. We haven't seen another figure like him really in NFL history. Um, but I think he's going to be like that, like rare explosive ability. But Randy Moss is another one that was like once in a lifetime. And again, these are the highest peaks we've ever seen in the NFL. I don't think he'll reach those peaks, but that type of like crazy explosive talent. That's what I think neighbors is going to be bananas. Um, the fact that some people don't have Marvin Harrison Jr. Who's like a wide receiver that got built in a lab as wide receiver one. It like. And some people have a Dunze wide receiver one. Like it, uh, all three of these receivers are are insane. Yeah, I think they're all great. I, I like the food comp too. Hey, <laughs> I like that they're all good food. I can't wait until we get to some of the bad ones. And it's going to be crazy because Cal's given his opinion on these players a little bit through these food choices. So I'm interested to to hear that aspect of it too. Last but not least, I wanted to throw out Joe Alts because med medley of longevity inducing vegetables paints a really pretty picture of uh, the long term success, longevity and healthiness of a roster. Cal, thanks for those. It'll keep us talking for a while. I'm still trying to figure them out. But with like most of what you put in the chat, that's just how it goes. Let's move on. Seven to 11. What rabbit hole is next? Seven, JJ McCarthy. Eight, Brock Bowers. Nine, Troy Fat Fatanu. 10, uh, can you, is it Talise Fuaga? I think it's yes. Talisi. Tal is it Talise? Talise? It might be Talise. It might be Talise. And 11 I'll is Olu Fashanu. Uh, I, I, I like these food comps already. We'll get to those in a second. But what stands out to you all? Obviously, the number eight staring right down the barrel for Talisa. the Denver Broncos. Talisa. Paul, uh, according to Oregon State's roster, Paul... Essa, Taliesa. Taliesa. That makes more sense. I mean, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Joey I, was on mute. Joey was on mute. No, I wasn't. My hands oh, are right God. here. <laughs> I was just sitting there trying to break that down because you said that makes sense. And I'm I reading know, this and I'm like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the one that stands out to me right here, Bree, is JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy, for me, a favorite flavorless white cube. What is this? It's like a <laughs> okay. Is this the is this the cop? Is this the food? Yeah, cop? this is the food cop. The justification so for Cal, or you, you go, Bree. You go, Bree. It's not, no, 
it's not even a sugar cube. It's a flavorless white cube, which I think is what got me so good. A blank canvas to project whatever you want onto it is a lot more favorable than what you think of if you were to just pop a flavorless white cube in your mouth. I don't know if this goes the way Cal wants it to go. But this is like, uh, he's like tofu or something, you know? It's like right now, it's maybe not that great. But you you give it to Chef Sean Payton, let him cook it up. You oh, know, maybe, maybe it's something. I mean, yeah, just like, I, and I think that's kind of what J.J. McCarthy is right now. Like, yeah, you don't want to throw that in your mouth right now. Like, that's not super exciting. Oh, my God. Um, but uh, it's a blank <laughs> canvas. That's what he is. He really is. He's incredibly young. Apparently, the intangibles and the mental ability are off the charts. Um, and uh, he's got like he he's a b plus at everything i don't think he's got a lot of like special athletic ability but he's got <laughs> enough there you know like he's not a, a problematic athlete in any way like like a cj stroud or a joe burrow um except for his frame his frame is maybe a problem he's a little skinny guy um uh hopefully he can uh uh you know get a little get a little thicker but yeah i would not pay three first round picks for him to uh d bronx point here in the chat I think this is the – wait, can I can I finish on J.J. McCarthy real quick? Yeah, of course. Perfect, I think it's the perfect comp, guys. Um, so many people just throw their idea of what J.J. McCarthy could be on him without ever seeing it ever in their life. <laughs> it's just like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Like, yeah, I think Zach kind of pointed out, like, it's uh, – P this is it, it's a projection people are projection projecting so much with this one so yeah i, I think uh that's a really good um comp there and i also i would move jj mccarthy down i'm not i i, I don't i don't know like am i do i believe without knowing everything about jj mccarthy mm -hmm. the human being the guy how is he learning all of this other stuff am i saying that automatically right now the player that i see just off of film am i taking him over brock bowers troy fatanu fuagu or fashanu um no. uh, i don't know i don't know i don't, I don't know it's like go out there say it joey i don't think you are i don't think i would at least what he is right now i think the argument is again the ceiling appears pretty dang high there and the broncos need a quarterback um and he's young and I See, think that's it. Like I'm with you. I'm I've I just agreed. Like I wouldn't I think you could put all these guys ahead of him. I think you make a very compelling case. You might even fall down uh in our updated one. We will put out in a week, I imagine, for the draft. Um I I just I, I wonder I wonder why or how we project a quarterback ceiling and then why JJ McCarthy's is so high. Is it just because he's young and we haven't seen aspects of his game yet? So we're Probably just like... putting too much into <laughs> the the third down metrics and then whatever rumblings we've heard about like teams losing their minds over him. And I think that's supported by the fact we've seen him fly up the boards after whatever like silly combine interviews. Like he is the uh, pre-draft biggest riser. But um, am I the one to trust NFL teams? Because I've seen NFL teams. So those I, players I like Cleland Farrell, you mentioned earlier, these were all NFL teams that made these decisions. <laughs> like I'm just not the one to trust NFL teams because I've seen them do stupid things over and over and over and over again. So like I don't know. I, I don't know about this one. To Cal's point here, JJ's kind of being buoyed to number seven by some people having him uh behind no one other than Drake May. So that's a that's a big factor in his high placement. There you go. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, you're good. Brock Bowers uh, food comp was carrot cake. And I almost took this as a negative, but Zach brought up a really good point that I wanted him to share on this one. Uh, and Joey too, but carrot cake is pretty divisive uh, across the board. A lot of people hate it. Uh, Joey mentioned oatmeal raisin cookies to be thrown into that batch as well, something we both love, um, which I think is apparent in Broncos country as well. Some people think it would be quite the reach to, to do so when it's not the most 
uh, the largest position of need for the Broncos, but I don't think that's ne necessarily true at 12. I think it's a steal. Um, carrot cake was in there. And then also I wanted to point out because it made me nostalgic, nostalgic is that uh, Fashani was uh, comp to the turnip from the, the old discord turnip gang emote tough and great when cooked, but presently a little raw. How do you feel about that comp Joey? I like it. I like it. I think carrot cake in general gets a bad rap. I think it's um, <clears throat> we're putting too much carrot on people in it. Uh, not only is it named carrot cake, we are drawing carrots and frosting on the top of it. It's just a little too much. I think it's hard for people to digest <laughs> the idea behind it, but when they taste it, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that description of it, Joey. It's also, uh, you know, a sweet treat, but a little healthier of a sweet treat and uh uh that's what i think he is like it's you're, you're treating yourself a little bit but you're also being a little healthy there is something substantive there this isn't all empty calories with brock bowers um and i think it i'm gonna go on I, I have not seen this argument anywhere in the draft world in regard to brock bowers and uh, one argument against him that i've seen and i i'm gonna take a counter uh, stance here as a as a someone who fancies themselves as a bit of a cap expert um uh that it's going to be harder to get good value on brock bowers because uh, the basic idea is let's say you hit on a roma dunze or, or even brian thomas jr let's say they take brian thomas jr and he ends up being a top 10 wide receiver well top 10 wide receivers by that point like, are going to be making like 35 million dollars a year and so he's going to be making like seven or 10. So you're freeing up like 25 million a year in surplus value. That's really nice given the like Russell Wilson problem uh, still lingering over the Broncos heads. Tight ends on the other hand, make like 15, I think uh, at the top of the market, 15 to 20. So, uh, you know, if he's awesome, uh, and, and looks like an awesome tight end, but you're paying him 10 million, you're only getting like five to 10 million in surplus value. So that's one argument used against it. Here's the counter Brock Bowers isn't really going to be used like a tight end, he's going to be used like a wide receiver. Exactly. Most of his snaps are going to come probably from the slot. He's going to uh, like be a Jerry Judy replacement in this offense more than an Adam Troutman replacement. Um, and his skill set is very different than Judy's. But like those are the snaps he's going to be eating. Um, from the slot position, he's also going to boost your run game a lot, which is great. You can be like an 11 and 12 personnel at the same time. Um, uh, and he is a very good wide receiver. He might be the fourth best wide receiver out of this class, uh, but that's just because this class is insane, a wide receiver. He is very, very good. And... Here's the here's how you also create additional value. Here's how he's actually going to create more value than even the wide receivers will. Because when those wide receivers sign their next contract, it will be for 35, 40 million, assuming they pan out, right? Brock Bowers, when he signs his deal, in spite of the fact he's really used like a wide receiver and just as valuable as these other wide receivers, he's going to be signed like a tight end, just like Travis Kelsey just like Rob Gronkowski, just like Jimmy Graham. And that means that you're not just creating value, surplus value during the rookie contract, you're creating crazy surplus value throughout the, the his veteran deal, if you hit on this, which I think is a li little extra nugget of uh, value with Brock Bowers that I haven't seen anyone discuss um, that I've been nerding out about and I wanted to rant about for a second. I got to throw the applause out here. Uh... We are going to give a round of applause right back to you. Thank you for supporting us. Appreciate the work from the crew. Just checked out the website. Wishing you guys the best. If you want to know what uh, gave the inspiration to one Eye Jacks to give us $20, then you need to go on over to letstalkbroncos.com right now. Experience it yourself. And then reach deep down into your heart and give us Thank some. Thank you. Well, just kidding. Uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. you for that. That helps fund us and keep us going and continue to um, give you guys the very best coverage that we absolutely can. So your support means everything. We're very appreciative of it and it does not go unnoticed. So thank you so much. I also wanted to give a special shout out because the last stream that we did and we weren't able to say thank you was Paul. Paul gave us a 
this donation uh the last live stream that we had and paul we we saw it just as we clicked out of the stream yard so thank you to you i know you're in the chat i saw you earlier so hello paul um super generous and we don't we don't know what to say every time we do it because your support means so much to us and again without you we we couldn't do this so thank you paul sorry to interrupt the brock bowers talk zach that's an interesting point that i that i didn't even consider um so thank you for bringing that up joey did you have anything to add to that no just that i've yeah I, that's something i've been pointing out not the cap implications necessarily but the point like people keep comparing his physical stats like he, he didn't test but they're like man he's a small tight end I'm like, why are we? Why are we even doing that? No, he's <laughs> like, a big wide receiver. He's a big wide receiver. He's like, why are we even doing five. that? It's just so stupid. It, it's kind of like, have you ever seen where it's like, instead of them listing them as edge, it's defensive end. And now, not only are we putting out edge defenders, but we're also comparing them to interior defensive linemen. Tight ends are of multiple different like sizes and shapes like just looking at that and being like him him playing the same position as chris man hurts is false <laughs> that's that's not what he'll be like it's just not what he is comparing him to daniel graham and just saying they play the same position is not true is they're not asked to do the same thing they're they're not they're not the same guy um so yeah i mean it, i think a lot of the stuff is silly you would need to find a list of players that have had success and didn't work out kind of playing the same role and compare them to those guys it's it, putting them in the same list as uh chris manhurts or just tight ends in general that's just a label it's not actually the position he plays look at michael thomas compare him to michael thomas compare him to uh who actually he compares very similarly to from a physical stance compare him to marcus colston these really big you know what people said about marcus colston when he was putting up crazy stats with drew Brees and sean pate's offense that he was a weird wide receiver tight end hybrid and then he kind of faded uh uh you know as all nfl players do eventually uh and then it was jimmy graham who was a tight end wide receiver hybrid and to the like cap point i was making had a big debate with the nfl where he like uh, petitioned the league office or whatever for him to be listed as a wide receiver on the franchise tag because he wanted that wide receiver payday and the league ultimately determined he was a tight end but that points to his utilization sean payton has very frequently had these like weird big bodies that are wide receiver tight end hybrids in, in his offense and, and maybe just brock bowers isn't a good player or whatever but i would trust sean payton more than just about any other offensive coordinator on how to use this talent because we've seen him use so many similar ones and bowers is a unique talent there aren't many like him payton's a guy we've seen use these guys before uh, moving on to Oh, what? really quick. I, I imagine we'll want to move on to other tiers here or whatnot, but I want to, uh, and not to steal your job, Brie, but Joey, shout out your Troy Fautanu love because you were on him before anyone else. And now I feel like he's a damn near consensus top 10 player. Uh, but I know you were there months ago when most people had him in the 20s. <laughs> Absolutely. Troy, Troy, thank you, Zach, by the way, for let me get, the, get on this train real quick. But yeah, Troy Fautanu. Um, it is really, really good. I think people <laughs> saw the height and were like, uh, is he a tackle? Guys, the, 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 the issue with this and the coach every day of the week, it, it's not height isn't an issue at tackle. It's length. And usually just taller people have longer arms. Um, Troy Fatanu is one of the rare exceptions where he's like six three six four but with the length with the length of a six foot six guy so he totally works at tackle in the nfl level in my opinion especially because i think he has the most technique involved in his game he has more in his bag than any offensive lineman in this class pound for pound um athletic freak moves super super well in open field uh I, I would love him as a Bronco, but as like an evaluator, I would love to see him in a wide zone scheme and just see him use his athleticism and uh, his physicality on the move. If you saw him at the scouting combine, you know he moves like a linebacker in space or something like that. It's it, He's an extremely rare and unique and different talent at offensive line, and I feel like people are afraid to – 
afraid to put their <laughs> people were at least afraid to, you know, be like, this is the guy. But I, I've been happy to see people come around to him because this is like my biggest draft crush I've had this year. Uh, Troy Fatanu is a baller. Sorry, I didn't know if uh, Zach usually follows up with something. So I'm just waiting for him to talk. And then I looked up and thought he was muted and he wasn't. I was just mouthing the pronunciation of that name so that I don't stumble on it the next time. Anyways, we're going to round out the uh, big board list here with 12 through 15. But before, uh, I, I wanted to kind of lead with Jared versus Comp first because I want you, while you're describing this pick, to speak to that food comp. So we got Byron Murphy. Jared Verse, Brian Thomas Jr., and Jaden Daniels. Jared Verse being that hamburger. Go. Yeah. It wasn't my comp. You know, this is Cal. Shout out to uh, our lovely community. Uh, we shouted out the financial support earlier, which we appreciate a great deal. But if you want to be featured on the website, uh, send a uh, op-ed in to our email, what's on draftpod at gmail.com, or to me, Zach Seegers, right in at gmail.com, and you can end up on the site. Uh, but anyways, Cal sent this in. That's how we got all our food comps. And uh, he gave us no explanation for the hamburger one. Um, my best guess, uh, you know, a, a hamburger will like give you a good bit of protein, like will fuel you through the day. It's a powerful meal in that sense. And Jared verse is a beefy, powerful, uh, impact player. Uh, I mean, he's a true power rusher. I think he will be reminiscent of like Bradley Chubb in a lot of ways. I don't know if he's going to be like Mr. 15 sacks a year. Um, but he's a very impressive athlete. He's going to play the run really well. He's going to uh, impact the quarterback a lot. And he has a lot of upside. I think uh, uh, for a Broncos pass rush, that is really uh, uh, looking hard for a true number one right now. It's got a lot of Robins, but not a Batman. As we've said a few times, uh, Jared Verse has a chance to be a Batman. He does. And not only that, I think... Um, he fits the room stylistically very well. I, I think he fills not just, you know, he could be the best pass rusher on the team archetype, but also is the skill set that you need there. Like his play style is what you need there. I think people looking at other versions of Nick Benito and Baron Browning, even if that guy did work out really well, your run defense is probably going to suck. If you have Nick Benito on one side and a similar, but maybe a better pass rusher version of him like that, that's not answering the question you're looking to answer. Uh, J Jared verse here is the guy you want. Like he is the guy you want. He gives you multiple different skill sets in that edge room because of that. So yeah, I, I Jared verse is my number one pass rusher in this class for the Broncos. I, I if you want to read more about him, I wrote a, a scattering report on him this off season. I'm really proud of that one. So yeah, go check that out on let's talk broncos.com. Uh, Papa Seeger says, why doesn't Mel Kuyper give food comps lazy? We agree. Uh, Alex <laughs> says uh, he plugs a hole uh, that indeed he does. I'm going to throw up another food comp from this list and it's Jaden Daniels being an at risk sandwich. The, uh, <laughs> The the description here was could be incredible or could make you horribly sick. Um, an at risk sandwich. I, I really do love that one. It made me laugh out loud. Yeah. Um, Jaden Daniels was the guy who through this process, I, as I've mentioned on the show a bit before, I kind of was late to the scouting process. I didn't really start watching these guys until March and I've been cramming like crazy ever since. Um, <clears throat> Jaden Daniels is a guy that really fell for me. Like I was expecting him to look like a quarterback that's a top five pick. And I, I didn't see that, um, at all. Uh, I I'm very I, I would not want to take, uh, Jane Daniels that high. Uh, it would be concerning to me. Now the upside's crazy. He's got a very strong arm. He can run. Uh, he'll probably, if he ran a 40 at the combine, it probably would have been a four, four. Um, he's got good running instincts too. I mean, outside of like protecting himself, like I think he's got good, vision and is good at uh, uh like finding the soft spots in the defense and whatnot and, and creating extra yardage um but man i don't know if he's going to protect himself he has no sense right now at the college level of protecting himself uh, i could see him getting injured very quickly in the nfl uh it, quickly and frequently um and then 
I, I think he's a lot like Justin Fields and Justin Fields could get away with the play style he needed to play with early on in his NFL career, which was like kind of slow processing and scrambling a ton because he was this tank. He looks like a linebacker. He could take that beating. I don't think Jaden Daniels is going to be able to. And you look at, uh, at LSU, he had uh, one of the uh, longest time to throws uh, in the sport. Um, uh, where is it? Uh 113th out of like 150 quarterbacks or whatever in time to throw held it for a really long time uh wasn't really good in terms to the peers in this class in terms of um stopping pressures from becoming sacks and the number one way he stopped pressures from becoming sacks was scrambles he's number four in all of college football and scrambles he scrambled as much as Jalen milrow the alabama quarterback for uh anyone that watched a lot of college football, that's not an NFL style of play. And, and you're not going to be able to like, especially at his body type, but like, you're not going to get away with that many scrambles. You're going to be chased down from behind by defensive ends at the NFL. They're better athletes. And I, I just, I don't think his body can survive it. I just, man, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm shockingly low on Jane Daniels. He's one that if the Broncos believed in him and somehow took him, I would, probably get excited because the the talent is certainly there but i just uh i don't i don't know there's a lot there that makes me i think he's a a more injury prone justin fields at the next level that's what i see hmm. mm -hmm. it, it, it's interesting he's big play guy right and then you have to ask yourself how much of that was his wide receivers and then also his two tackles that look like they're going to be first round picks next year he had, he had, again, Brian Thomas, who we've already mentioned, and Malik Neighbors, who we put in our top five um, at wide receiver. I, I think it's hard to figure out how much are we crediting Jane Daniels and how much are we crediting what he had around him. Um, I asked this on with Robbie and Frankie on our show uh, a couple Thursdays ago. Go check those out, by the way. We did a part one and part two on the Let's Talk Broncos YouTube Uh like, how scary is it that – I mean, this wasn't a quarterback we were expecting to be a first-round pick before this year. And then this year he does with all that talent around him. <laughs> it's You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's, it's tough. It's a tough evaluation for me. I think there's more risk involved here than people are willing to say. Um, ultimately, because the quarterback position is just such a need and you're willing to take that risk. But if we're putting a big board together, yeah, I would have him around here as well. Uh, probably with J.J. McCarthy right around here as too, but both of them. Uh, comps of note I wanted to throw out there, Brian Thomas, as you mentioned, Joey, uh, meatloaf. I like it. Hearty comfort food. Um, the, the description here was healthy, familiar, good, though not as not the best dinner option or the healthiest food. I, you know, I would think that most meatloaf lovers would frown at that uh, definition, but I also want to throw out Byron Murphy because red bell pepper and a knife because, uh, you know, a dangerous weapon and a healthy vegetable. So I really like those. I want you to go check them out when this article gets released. But guys, the meatloaf comp, how do you feel about that? Good, bad, indifferent? I mean, I think it's Meatloaf the musical artist because I think Brian Thomas Jr. is a superstar. <laughs> uh, go check out my write-up of him over on Let's Talk Broncos .com, uh, for more in-depth than I'll be able to go here. But I'm a tremendous fan. Like he's number four in this class and number 14 overall, because this class is loaded at the top with talent. Like I cannot uh, underline that enough. Um, but uh, he would have been my top wide receiver last year or the year before that. Um, uh, I, I, like I just, he, he's a standout talent. I, he's so impressive to me. Um, the route tree is a little concerning with him. Um, you maybe worry a bit about his agility. Uh, but he's just an unbelievable athlete. He's good after the catch. He's great at the catch point. Um, he's shown development uh, in the more nuanced areas, which again, that's that's the holes in his game, but he's shown development uh, over the past two years, especially over this uh, current year. Uh, so I'm optimistic about his coachability. Um, and for as good as Malik Neighbors is, like I talked about his explosive ability earlier, um, uh, just a standout wide receiver talent. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, led the team and led the SEC in touchdowns last year with 17. Neighbors was the only other guy over 10. So that's that he would be an immediate red zone weapon. Uh, I talked earlier about how uh, maybe a Joe Wall or a tackle selection is appealing because you get to trade Brock Bowers for a mid round draft pick. 
Well, Broncos country, Brian Thomas Jr. might be really appealing because I think he's day one. He's going to fill that Cortland Sutton role for you as an awesome vertical deep threat that can win those 50 50 balls, except he's a lot faster um, and a lot more deadly after the catch, uh, less of a nuanced route runner. Um and maybe not quite as nutty, ridiculous at the catch point, but he's going to fill that red zone void, that vertical threat uh, void immediately. And you could then trade Cortland Sutton for maybe a day two or a high day three pick um, and kind of get younger while also uh, getting some capital back. So I, I'm a big fan of BPJ. Sorry, the comments. If you're not in our comments section, you're missing out on some of the best back and forth that I get to witness while we're live on screen. Because D Bronx said he's good, but he's too Christian Watson adjacent for where he's being projected for me. In which Rock Walker says, I can't eat Christian Watson adjacent 14, which is the most hilarious sequence of comments that I have seen probably to date. Thank you guys for making me laugh. Um, we're going to round out this show by giving a special shout out to all of our listeners and to the people watching congratulations alex does youtube because you dropped us some big news here in the chat before we started the show we just wanted to give you a little shout out and kudos as well whenever you guys want to share good news with us and and what's going on in your life please do send it in the comments even yes, before please. we go live we love hearing about it we like supporting you guys as well we want to know what's going on in your life positive or otherwise uh you guys are fantastic we appreciate you cal special shouts out uh, for writing up this, <laughs> this great description. I laugh only because I'm going to be reading those food comps and trying to come up with my own description of all those things. Uh, obviously a big week heading up to the live uh, draft watch party. I got to remind everyone that on April 25th, that's a Thursday at 5 30 PM. We're going to be there till about 10 watching the first round of the draft and feel free to stop on by. You don't have to be there for the whole thing, but we will be doing some giveaways. There's drink specials, there's food specials. Uh, and you get to hang out with us for an evening while we live react and live stream the draft. If you're not going to be in Denver, make sure you hop on the YouTube and subscribe and set your notifications because we'll have that scheduled for all of you. We'll be back Wednesday with a special episode of Let's Talk Broncos. With the That's Good Broncos crew. Thursdays, obviously, Joey and Frankie. And, you know, sometimes Robbie joins. If you want to see their last week's episode, that was A++. Go on over and watch that. Uh, enjoy their coverage. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm rambling. What else do you have? for the for the viewers so make sure you click out let's talk progress.com bang do that yeah I, I love the draft content we have over there we have the best draft content of anyone in broncos country bar none but way more draft articles in-depth uh analysis details all that good stuff i like the bronx comment uh the athletic has the beast ltb has the feast we should do that the feast zach that's what we name it the feast i like okay. it yeah hopefully you don't get sued um no if we do we do anyways <laughs> it's good content we'll make sure we make a banner of it for the website <laughs> take our take our youtube check it's a big i mean <laughs> i dare you comes after us who the they're gonna be disappointed coming after our youtube <laughs> They're going to be the pissed the fuck off when they sue us. <laughs> this is why we need your donations, guys. We need to hire a lawyer to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the New York Times. We have to pay off the Times because they're after us. <laughs> um, that would be a fun story, but I don't want to be featured Ooh, in the course. Times. <laughs> with a crossbow. Yeah, anyways. All right, we're headed out for the evening. We'll see you on Wednesday. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.